This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, December the 27th, 2018. And hello, Vegas. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Hope everyone had a good day today. I actually was a little bit busy today. I had to take my mom to an appointment. And then I had an appointment because I thought, you know, it's so important to check your eyes because, you know, we trade and stare at the screen all day or even if you don't trade all day because you don't need to sit at your desk all day and trade um you know that's the beauty of trading you know the luxury to do what you want when you want but uh you know because when you stare at the screen it does put a strain on your eyes so i had my eyes checked today at my good friends at opticon who are sponsoring our youtube tonight so thank you to my friend shaz i've actually known shaz i gotta tell you i think it's been like 15 years and uh, happy to see him and, and the staff are so great. And um, I was telling him about our YouTube and he actually said he's following the channel and he's learning. So I was really happy to hear that he's learning. And uh, he mentioned that, uh, you know what, for the viewers of our channel, especially the Toronto viewers, uh, if you're ever in the vicinity, you're welcome to drop by. You will get a $50 credit towards any prescription glasses or sunglasses. So thank you, Shaz, for that. Appreciate it. And the viewers will appreciate it. And hopefully I'll be able to meet someone in the U.S. that can give something to the U.S. followers. So I'm always trying to find things to give to the viewers. Um, and then the other thing that I'm definitely going to try out, which I might give away to some viewers, um, is this product called TheraPearl. It's an eye mask that Shaz said I should try out. Um, he said that if I freeze it and put it on for 10 minutes um, before I go to bed, that makes a huge difference in your, um, you know, your eyes and your eyelids. Apparently, it's really good for like um, people that have aches and pains and people that have allergies um, or sinuses. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this out. And let me tell you, if I like this, I'm going to try it for a week. And if I actually like it, okay, YouTubers, I'm going to give some of these away. So stay tuned, but only if I like it, because if I don't like it, I'm not going to give you something that I don't like. So enough of that. So thanks for listening. And thank you again to Shaz at Opticon. So um, I do want to talk about tonight, what w-a-t-t -T. the i want to talk about any nio the iwm and explain a little bit about that and i also want to talk about an otc stock s-o-a-n zone so let's start with what w-a-t-t -T. so what was a really really exciting run this was actually called out in pre-market in our chat for those of you that do pop in there um, but if you don't, that's okay. We do talk about the stuff here on video. So, um, this was mentioned this morning around 575, actually around more around 590 as one to watch. And the volume was just not that great. And we were looking for the break of $6 didn't happen. And as a matter of fact, some people traded it pre-market and then took a small stop loss because they didn't see it break six bucks. But let me tell you when the market opened at 930, the stock started to get a lot of momentum and boy, this ran beautifully all the way to 959, Jim. Yes. Something okay. like that. Yeah. 959. So this had a beautiful run. Yeah, 959. And uh this actual stock here had some news. And um the news on that, let me just pull it up here. I think Jim's showing it to you guys right now. And do I have the news there, Jim? Yep. I don't see the news. Maybe you can read the news and tell the viewers what you see there. Enormous Corporation announces first customer product approved for the FCC. Okay. That was the news. So that was interesting. That was the news. The float was about $19.8 million. Uh, definitely rotated the float two times, which I love when floats rotate. And uh, Jim is going to tell you guys, I got to tell you, I don't know anyone that called this out so many times on the pullbacks and on the breakouts more than washboard jim himself i think he must have called this out no kidding i'm not exaggerating at least 15 times or more yep. and that's just from what i was listening to and following because i was looking at other stocks during the day 
So that's just a bare minimum. For people that love to scalp, and I mean, Jim's your guy. So Jim, you talk about that because you were all over this non-stop. Yeah, I don't know if I want to talk about that or maybe um, another chart that was brought to our room by one of our one of our uh, members. So there's, what I like about our room is we have a lot of talented people in here. First, I'll talk about mine, then I'll roll up his chart just to show you some of the talent we have. But this is what. And right out of the gate, I knew this morning pre-market that this thing was a good stock just by the action it had and the volume it had. And this is a picture of what I posted in the uh, stock twits. And I was making every one of these calls, and I was just kind of showing everybody, you know, each call. Today we had two bullish rectangle breakouts, which I really thought was good. And along with that, it ran with the SMA, the 50 SMA, all day long, most of the day. And once that SMA started to curve down, so did the stock. But on the way down, it was hitting my moving averages. And there was just, every, every chart tells a story. And if you're able to get to the point where you can read each move in a chart, or what pattern's breaking out, because they can pose different patterns all day long. So we took this from early morning. We had the first bullish rectangle. You can look that up on the website. It's called a bullish rectangle breakout. And what it does is it looks like kind of like a pennant, but it just goes sideways for a while. And you'll have this up and down motion. And I found this little channel right here between 691 and 727, although it was up above that a little bit. And I called the breakout, and then all of a sudden, man, once it hit, bounced off that 50, and you could have been playing this off the 50 SMA also, as I'm showing right here. But it ran all the way up. I mean, this was just... What? 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 On the scanner all day long. What? I mean, it was probably, I, <laughs> I mean, for a consistent thing to pop up on the scanner like that, it has to pay attention to it. So we ran up past what I thought was going to be resistance, and I was calling these resistances out one by one. You know, it's going to the next one, and it's going to pull back, and it's going to hit that, and it's going to, and it just all day long. And once we get to the top, we started pulling back, and what we did is we hit that 100 SMA and we hit it right on my trend line at 828 and it bounced on up hit that spot there and let me pull this up on the uh, so I can move this around a little bit then we, what we did is we, we pulled back and we hit that 100 SMA right there and it ran on up and I hit my resistance at 867 there's a 40 cent flip right there pulled on back to the 200 I called this little move and it bounced a little bit but pulled back so I told everybody where I got out of it made about 20 bucks and then it fell on down and this is what I thought was very interesting about this chart here we've hit these two breakout bullish rectangles and that top of that rectangle was a resistance here I had at 727 in that channel well once it went up to the high it pulled back to that top of that channel again on that on that flag on that triangle and it just went on up from there and it bounced up and hit that 50 and pulled back and hit that support again then bounced on up and hit the 200 and this happened all the, the call just just like that just like clockwork all day today and then it closed at the bottom of that flag which i thought was very interesting so in this trade alone i learned a lot about bullish rectangle breakouts and i also learned something new too that once it broke out it could pull back and hit the top of that support level or that resistance level so after hours this had great news uh, i think with momentum will pick up tomorrow if it pulls back a little bit that'll be fine and then i want to show you this other guy's chart that's in our room uh, what was his name uh miss vegas jackson yeah his name's uh jackson yeah and he kind of drawn it out here he has the VWAP right in here. He, he doesn't have any of my moving average, but he does have the EMAs, it looks like. So he called, you know, short-term pennant flag, triangle breakout, which I called there. Then he had talked about when it broke and it started to dip on down. And so this is something he was playing off the VWAP, too. He could have bounced it up off the VWAP if he liked. But this is just some of the rare talent that we have in our room and quite honored to have him in here. And the next one we're going to, so keep what on watch. And I want to show you one more thing about what. 
Okay. This is what really attracted me is the year chart. Vegas and I ran this sucker up about the same time last year. Her and I were together. And this thing ran up all the way to, I mean, we called this at a very low level. Let me see if I can pull up a three-year. I remember this real well. It was the last day of the year that was the market was open, and it was down here at 865. And I remember Vegas calling this out. And it ran all the way up that one day, all the way up to 35 bucks. And we were just going bananas over this thing. So now it's pulled back to a low, back here down to this yearly low here. And then today when it got that news, it just started breaking out. It didn't didn't want to stop or nothing. There was nothing fighting this stock today. Nothing. Until it until it hit its final resistance at 959. And I was just so, imp I was very impressed with this trade today. I've just tickled to death. It made my day. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be any. I'm having, I was having a technical issue here. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know. What, like I said, I didn't hear you. And I'm like, what happened to my connection? Uh, I do want to mention too quickly on what um, that someone, and I don't know what the entry was on the stock, but they actually, on the option trade, but they did call. They actually could see, in their opinion, they could see that the stock was going to go towards 10. Uh, maybe not hit 10, but go towards 10. And they actually bought a $10 option call that expired January 1st, um, sorry, January 28th. And uh, he, made I don't know what he, paid, he made 60%. He made 60% on it. Very well. Yes. Yep. So that was a really great, good job there. So good. Congratulations on that one. I mean, I didn't call it, and I'm glad that someone else did because, you know, you can't call everything that happens during the day. There's just too much action happening. So I'm really happy that we have a lot of great traders that help and share ideas. And that's the whole point of, of collaborating together is really to share ideas. So the next one is to talk about any because you guys know any they're into data management they do um cloud on premise implementations and they are into you know helping people with their IT stuff. So I am not a fan of any huh, personally um cuz I've not it's on my do not trade and sometimes I have sometimes scalped it but I I will never swing this stock ever. Um that's just my own personal thing. Um, I've just been burned by just way too much for from a dilution perspective. Um, but there are people that did well with it today. And uh, Jim can talk about that because people definitely traded this and did very well. But I did mention when I was noticing uh, when I was remote that people were trading any. And I made a comment in the room and I said, please, no one swing any at all. And boy, I got so many thank yous already saying thank you for telling us not to swing trade any and you know what look where it is now it's pulled back significantly so i'm glad that i you know did just share my personal thoughts is please don't swing any at this point and also i think there's going to be more dilution on the stock i think they have an s1 filing sitting on the shelf there so who knows when they'll pull that one so jim over to you on that chart yeah you never know but we do know one thing about any it, it can bounce pretty good because it's a low float stock and it can also dip just as fast or even faster so we, right out of the gate this thing was around here around 210 and it ran all the way up to 370 so you know that's a pretty good play actually uh, you know and we we like we like any just the fact because it can bounce up fast then we dislike it because it can definitely get burned on it fast so you have a couple and it's a low float stock so this thing, I called this little bitty triangle right here, this little pennant flag. I figured it was going to break out again, and it did. I called it before the breakout, and we're about in here. And then all of a sudden, man, it popped up, but it didn't didn't carry through. It popped up oh, about 26 cent to 39, so it didn't. It only popped up 13 cents, and then right after that, it it at the end of the day, it gave up pulled back to 270 after hours and here we are right around 288 right now so we just wanted to mention any it's it's a it's a flow float risk pump play so you want to be careful with it if you ever see it running you can definitely make a little money on it the position now but you can't trust it like she said you know she she's very very 
stout about saying, you know, don't don't swing this stock. So that's any. And the next one I want to talk about was the one that I'm proud of, and that would be Nio. Nio, I called the triple bottom on Nio. Is there anything you'd like to say about it, Vegas? No, I'm just waiting for the trade war eventually to come to an end, and there, there'll be some future news. I mean, I don't really like. I said. I'm a big fan of Nio. Love the cars. They look really slick. Yep. And uh, like I've said, I think that, and I'm still bullish on the stock. I mean, I think that the company stock, the IPO price, the stock's just hurting. And I think it just has to do with this China trade war. So, you know, just whatever happens to the stock between now and when there's hopefully a resolution or a deal uh, sometime in 2019, I don't even think there'll be one until the second quarter. But, you know, it's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, you know, people are scalping Neo and, and, and Jim called it a great trade opportunity today. So definitely talk about that uh, for longer term holders. You know, I just think we just got to be patient uh, with what the future holds with Neo because definitely has a future. It's just with everything going on, it's, you know, kind of a bit of a turnoff. But hey, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, but I'll be, be patient. If you can call these bottoms like we, you and I do. Oh, yeah. That was a beautiful play, Jim. <laughs> yeah. We called this the other day. I have called a week that was, I know this is on our last video, so I won't take too much of your time. But it dropped, I called this bearish week right here. And then right when it hit that triple bottom, that was right about where the IPO opened up here around six bucks. I called it 592. And we've had two successful green days with a higher ending higher than the previous day so I'm, I'm bullish on this stock at this level right here it can pull back it can pull back definitely like it did today and i'll prove that to you see we had that breakout yesterday and then after hours it got right really up there around 642 and then first thing this morning market opened you had your people in there trying to short it went right down to my little support level here at six bucks so you had a chance to flip this again. This is two days in a row now. I, I, I'm not much into swinging it right now, but once the trade war is over, I'm going to be ha I'm going to be loading up on it because I think this can be another Tesla. Not probably, you know, they're not into shingles and all that other stuff, but rockets and things like that. But but here we go. We're down here at six, and then here we close at six forty-five, and like natural, it pulls back again after hours. Probably pull back again in, in the morning. Maybe we can get in around this 618 level. So this is Nile. I'm bullish on it, and I'm just going to show you just a, one more chart here of where I think it can go. I think at the end of the day, it can hit seven bucks. Then seven bucks would be a resistance, and we can maybe carry it on up to about 770, 790. And then from there on, and that's going to be into next year. So that's Nile. And Vegas has a wonderful call she's very proud of today, and that's IWM. And it does not stand for it wasn't me. <laughs> so I do want to mention the IWM. Um, I mean, I didn't trade the stock, okay, because that's expensive. Um, I would have needed thousands of shares to make money. But, um, you know, one of the things I love about options, you know, and again, like I said, options is new, so I really love to try to find a good option set up where I can try to help people with a small account grow an account. And I'm really happy about this trade. So I spotted the IWM this morning and it looked like definitely it was going to pull back and um, have some sort of a little bit of a bottom and then probably towards the end of the day, probably re reverse and then head back, back up. But I mean, that would be hard to forecast. But from the action this morning, it definitely looked like it was being shorted. So... I did call a put on an option call on the IWM at a strike of $128. And we got those for $0.64, cents, which is an investment of $64. And you know what? It took a little, quite a little bit of time, but uh, it finally made it over the dollar. So we were able to turn $64 into $100. And in some cases, some people sold theirs at $123, which is $123. So people did really, really well. And I have people that have small accounts that it was their first time doing an option trade. And they were really happy to turn $64 into 100 bucks. 
And they were like, oh my God, I made like, you know, it was nice to have a hundred dollar bill into their account. So, you know, um, this is great. You, you wouldn't have been able to put $64 into a stock and you would have to buy thousands of shares or have a really cheap stock, probably like an OTC stock to make that kind of money. So it uh, just goes to show you options can be lucrative, but again, it's about finding the right setup, the right volume, position size properly and know your risk. And uh, we were actually good with this trade. So, you know, the IW, um, just to explain to people, um, it really tracks the results of the Russell 2000. And, you know, the IWM has a whole bunch of different stocks in it. Um, it's an ETF and it has uh, companies like Etsy. It has Planet Fitness in there. It has the Trade Desk. It has Spirit Airlines. I mean, it's got a whole bunch of companies in there. So it is an interesting thing to trade. And actually, after hours, it actually reversed and went over $132. Oh man. So really um, we bounce. had good, good timing on that. And, you know, maybe, you know, we could have even looked at maybe getting not just puts this morning, but also looking at calls. But, I, you know, I didn't think about that idea. And uh, puts were a lot cheaper than calls. So we did the right thing. People traded green. And that's what matters on it on days like today. It's challenging to find sometimes really good setups. So congratulations to the option traders and especially to the ones with small accounts because I love helping people with small accounts. So I love hearing the growth story. And uh, the next stock, and actually one of the last ones we're going to talk about, is an OTC stock. So uh, S-O-A-N, Stone. And this company uh, came to my attention from Kiko. And thank you for sharing that. Um, and uh, this particular stock is of interest because um equine holdings which is owned by brent atwood and brent atwood is a former hedge fund guy um he's got a huge background in the banking sector he knows what he's doing <clears throat> and he's invested obviously he owns equine holdings and they filed a 13d and they've taken an eight percent stake in soan so if you guys want to check him out brent atwood um, but there is going to be probably some continuation. This became a swing trade. I took it at 0 0.028. And I think most people took it around there or a little bit less. And we're going to swing trade this. We'll see what it does tomorrow. But I am looking to see also a future phase three FDA update on the stock. So Jim, can you talk about that chart, please? Because it looks pretty damn good. Yeah, I'll talk about it. I like the chart. I like the year chart on it. Let me pull up the year's chart first. I have this thing charted out pretty good. I noticed that here in the last four or five months, it could come up from a bottom here at 0 0.0065. Today, we closed at 0 0.033. So it's had a pretty good little three-day run. It, it was actually bounced almost at the bottom here off of a penny. A little bit below that, a point zero zero eight low three days ago on this thing, and then it kind of, kind of had a day of relaxation, and then it went ahead and bounced on up today at a high of around. Let me see. I'll put it up to day chart. And 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 our OTC trader in the room. He's a very trusted trader, and he teaches courses, and and he really that's his, that's his thing. He really likes the OTC department. And I used to trade him too, but he's. I have to give my hats off to the guy. So we kind of just hovered around today. It had a great breakout this morning. Pulled back a little bit to about a pivot point of the day, which was right around 0284. And then here at close, we went back up to around 0 0.033. So let's keep this on watch. I'm going to see if I can maybe guess a resistance. I don't think I'm as good as this guy is, but I'm going to look at it on a 20 day. We had a double top right over here around four. So I think it'd be nice to bring this back up to four cents and maybe bring it up to four two six. And you can see that on a on a yearly chart where that comes from. See that high right here, right around four two six, where we had that top. And then we have just kind of another top right here, a solid resistance right here at four six nine. So if it pulls back, 
if it pulls back any, it'll be right around that 2.8 area. And I like <clears throat> to see it go no lower than that and bounce up by the end of the day, maybe up to about 4.24. And then if we can break that, we'll go that 4.69. That's just my opinion. He's probably well, got you know what? I think that's a great analysis. And I think that this is a lot of potential because I did mention, you know, Brent Atwood. Yeah. Uh, he, oh, yeah. You know, his, back, his background. And, you know, he owns um, Equine Holdings. But I didn't have a chance. I just wanted to mention, you know, Equine Holdings, uh, which is his company uh -huh. that he founded. And uh, is a, you know, it's a basically a, a multifamily office. And what they do is they manage private and public companies. And they basically manage the capital from ultra high net worth families that basically, you know, they basically use equine to advise them on wealth preservation and grow their money and uh, legacy generational planning. So the fact that his company, and don't forget, he's got an extensive background, this guy, so he's brilliant. He's taken an interest to put money into Sone. That's a great sign. And Sone also has, I told you guys, the um, phase three data that has to come out. Um, and we're waiting for the uh, phase three. Um, they're entering, they're entering the phase three and uh, we're waiting for the details of that. And this is for the uh, patch, which is going to treat uh, chronic cardiovascular disease. Oh, um, so this will be quite uh, significant and waiting for FDA approval of this liprostin. So this will be amazing news if they can get this approved. Oh, I'm, I'm reading some interesting stuff in here, too, about it. And uh, what kind of caught my eye here, our products are previously generated over $10 million in sales through various sales outlets, including GNC. So, yeah, this this and this had a 52 cent high in a three year period. So we're sitting only down here around three cents, mind you. And if this investor likes this stock, it's probably bring it up higher, definitely than what I'm saying. Well, I will say it has brought a lot of attention in the OTC market, yep. knowing that he has personally invested, uh, taken a stake and an interest in the in the company. Yep. A lot of OTC traders picked up the stock tonight or during the day, and they're definitely swing trading this because they are definitely banking on yep. a continuation of the stock tomorrow and then we'll see what it what it does tomorrow so if okay. you're not in the otc stock all we're saying is keep a watch might interest you as always do your own due diligence and on that note that's an update market report oh i we do got... want to mention ah. we have two winners two winners two winners from yesterday's i asked you guys what does what stock does jim not like or what company did jim say he doesn't like and the correct response was GS. <laughs> and that's when Jim was talking about Tesla and NIO. So thank you so much. I actually had over 55 people into the contest. That's really good. Love to see more participants. I will have future contests probably on the weekend. I'll have one. So the two winners was Devin Trent, S. Raymond, and she won. So if both of you can email me, Vegas at ilovestocks.com. I will get in touch with you once you email me, and I will be sending you guys a Starbucks gift card. So congratulations. Can you repeat them names one more time? Yes, S. Raymond and Devin Trent. All right. And we did All have right. one. We did have one more to talk about. What's that? DXR. Oh my god, yes. So that was a bonus. Yep. Uh DXR. I just wanted Jim to talk about that chart. I just want it to be on a watch. There is no position, but I did like the cup and handle on the weekly. All right. Well, I'm showing you the website of DXR right here. So you can always look up the website. They have the investors analysis in here and they talk about the products they have and just seem like a neat little website and they have a little pipeline here. So I'm going to talk about the chart for a short period of time here. I have it all charted up. So I've been watching this baby and we've been, look at the chart on this thing. In 20 days, it's gone from 575, not even that long, three weeks, less than three weeks, 575 and all this market beating and everything else, it still went on up. So today we hit kind of a resistance. We hit a little resistance here around 960, had a high of 979. So what I'm thinking of today 
it did hit my last breakout spot here and i didn't look at this stock today so i've been looking at this i guess we might have talked about this before vegas because i definitely have it charted up so we hit this resistance right here and i'm going to put it right about 958 okay so let's see if we can get this to pull back a little bit maybe to this resistance level of 894 and we're just going to keep this on watch because it keeps creating 52 week highs it's done that we had a little consolidation period right here at this level at 680 and then for the last week and a half it's ran up here to 955 but i am seeing a little top here so i want to put a little caution flag on it i'm going to keep it on watch and i'm going to pull up one more chart just to see where we are on the three year oh yeah this one year alone i can just pull up the one year and, and get a pretty good little analysis on it so we got some other highs we could break if we break past 10 bucks on this thing you might get some new buyers in here and we could bring this up to about 1035 you see how much history tells i mean i was just looking at a 20-day chart and about ready to give up on it but once i pulled this yearly chart up i said hey this could have some higher highs i mean this thing was up at 2166 probably on some good news it within a week it bounced from 344 all the way up to 2166 so there's something about this company that we need to keep an eye on this could be very bullish stock especially with the hard times we've had here in the last week and a half two weeks that that really attracts me big time because <laughs> almost every stock we watch it tanked <laughs> but we still had we still found good trades every day we sure did yeah we sure so did that's the close of the aftermarket report and i know vegas okay, great. got say all right well tomorrow is friday so we will not report on friday but uh jim and i will have one on sunday and uh i have to tell you i have been working long hours after hours late at night with jim i've probably exhausted this man we have a lot of really amazing things coming up in the new year and um i cannot wait to share what we have planned but i'm gonna wait until the new year because i have so many new things to tell you but i can't tell you until it's the new year because i it's just fits in with the new new things and new year so stay tuned in the meantime please like subscribe follow share the channel with anyone that you think uh would benefit you're welcome to come check us out in our room and uh, we hope that you will enjoy your experience with us. And uh, if you don't, that's okay. Please give us feedback. You know, we love hearing what you think, what you like, what you don't like. So thank you again so much, everyone. Have an amazing night. Have an amazing weekend. And we'll talk to you guys on Sunday. I got a small confession. Yesterday. Oh, my God. What? Yesterday when Vegas did the contest, she, you know, she asked what the question was and and I couldn't even answer it. <laughs> and I said, well, what, what did I, what company did I badmouth? And she had to tell me and I said, oh yeah, that's just, you know, I, I haven't liked GE, GM for a long time. I call them right. government motors myself. So, and I was very impressed with the, the people that replied. I mean, it, it, it made me feel, you know, pretty spunky that we do have some good people out there that like to listen all the way through our videos. And I want to make one more post. I post this video in my personal channel on YouTube. And if anybody's listening, i like for them to hit the I Love Stocks YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Ring that bell so you can get our updates. And I'm telling you, some of these picks we make are breakouts the next day. And, it, and we've, we're having a lot of feedback saying, I made 50% here. I made 20% here. I made $1,500 off that pick yesterday. If it wasn't for the video, I don't think I would have made the trade. Exactly. And I don't want to, I just want to say one, I'm so sorry to make this video go a little longer than normal, but you know what? I actually even have traders that have been watching the YouTubes that they're not in our room and it's fine. And they told me they have a full-time job and that these videos have been so helpful to even just picking a swing trade. So I'm really glad that we're even helping people that don't come to the room that you know can't trade full time they're doing swing trades they're growing their account and you know what i love that and that is why i gotta say i love stock so much because it just can it's just life-changing for so many people so 
Congratulations. And this is what it's about is helping the trading community. So I will be announcing some great things in the new year for a lot of good things coming up. And uh, I hope it's going to enhance your uh, viewing experience and help you become a better trader. So thank you, everyone. Have an amazing night. And I'll see you on Sunday. Well, it's time to say goodbye. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is December the 27th, 2018. And I'm hoping 2019 will bring us big bucks. I love stocks. Thank you.